Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and welcome back to something I like to call Stories from the Maelstrom, a recap of the day's games for this past week of real time. First, we're heading to New York as the Detroit Rockets came to town to face the New York Swats. Actually, they had come to town yesterday. This is the second game in the series. And um, actually, the main headline of this game is just the fact that Brett Saberhagen, uh, with the Detroit Rockets, uh, won his fifth game. He's the second pitcher to reach five wins. Uh, he did it by allowing just three earned runs and ten hits in eight innings in this one, um, outdueling Walter Johnson uh, of the New York Swats, uh, who allowed 13 hits um, on that side. The only other item of note, really, um, I mean, it was a fairly close game. Uh, Detroit led the entire way. Uh, New York kind of battled back to get to within a run, but then couldn't quite do anything after that. Um, they did have a Wade Boggs on second base with two out in the ninth, but uh, couldn't get anything more out of uh, out of that. Tom Henke uh, picked up his sixth sixth save, and um, as I said, the other uh, only other item of note is that uh, New York Swats catcher Yogi Berra actually threw out three base runners trying to steal on him. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, Kenny Lofton, and Charlie Blackwell all got thrown out in this game. Um, so uh, he had a good game behind the plate there. He only went one for four um, on the offensive side. Wade Boggs went three for five. He's now hitting 356. But New York fell to 11 and 17. Detroit improves to 15 and 13. Uh, Mark McGuire uh, in this one went three for five with a couple of RBI there. Um, all singles, though, oddly enough. Heading over to St. Louis as the Chicago Docks were facing the St. Louis Wizards. And there was uh, <laughs> a lot of wildness in this one. Um, so overall, Chicago won 7-3. Uh, St. Louis Wizards, of course, the uh, has have the best record in the entire Maelstrom. But a couple of interesting things happened. First off, uh, this was the first time this season that Bobby Bonds was starting in right field. So both Barry and Bobby were in the Chicago lineup, uh, father and son duo there. And they combined to go five for eight with five RBI and uh, one run scored. So pretty successful duo there. Uh, Bobby, in his first start of the year, went three for five here with a couple of doubles. Uh, he did ground into a double play in the ninth, but still a very good game for him. Um, Barry uh, had a double of his own, a sack fly, walked walked in a run there in the sixth. Uh, so that was kind of crazy. Uh, overall, Chicago um, actually did pretty well against Robin Roberts, who is uh, was the all-star game starter for the National League. Um, coming off of that start, though, he had a rough time, allowing 13 hits in five and a third inning. Uh, and six runs. Um, Chicago pretty much <laughs> getting on base at will and scoring at will against him, nearly. Uh, I mean, all said and done, six earned runs, as I said. But 13 hits is pretty crazy. The other uh, item of note in this game, a couple of them actually, is that in the seventh inning, uh, Rick Russell, the Chicago starter, uh, had allowed three earned runs into the seventh, just six hits. And um, he was ejected uh, in that seventh inning after he hit Rogers Hornsby with a pitch. Um, both teams had been warned earlier in the game. And um, I think with, I think Oscar Charleston got hit by a pitch. There was somebody else that got hit. Uh, let me check the box score here. Oh, Tulowitzki. That's right. So Tulowitzki got hit in the sixth. So after Oscar Charleston got hit in the fifth, um, Tulowitzki got hit in the sixth, and um, both benches had been warned at that point. So when Hornsby got hit in the bottom of the seventh, uh, Rick Reschel got ejected at that time. Uh, so that was interesting. And then, of course, the other interesting thing is 
the teams combined for nine double plays in this game, which uh, would set a major league record if we were playing in the major leagues for the National League. I think the National League record is eight, I want to say. Uh, somewhere in here I have it. Yeah, the National League MLB record set by Boston and Chicago in 1928 is eight uh, combined double plays for two teams, and here we have nine. Uh, Chicago had four of those. St. Louis had five, so turned five, I should say. So that was pretty crazy as well. Uh, as I said, overall, though, Chicago tops the uh, Wizards 7-3. to three. They improved to 10-18. and 18. The Wizards fall to 20-8. and eight. A lot of craziness in this game. Uh, next, we head to Boston as the Oakland Jacks face off against the Boston Splinters. And uh, Bob Feller had a very rough start. Um, the Boston Splinters batted around in the first inning, actually. Uh, they hit back-to-back uh, -back homers from Cal Ripken and Carlton Fisk. And uh, Tony Oliva hit a three-run double, bases-clearing double there, um, also in the first inning. Uh, Feller did calm down a little bit after that. Um, he did pitch five innings, uh, but he allowed eight runs in that first inning. And um, there in the sixth, uh, Charlie Geringer got on with a single, and then Harmon Killebrew hit a two-run homer to knock Feller out of the game. Feller has had a rough year. Uh, he's one in four after this loss with an ERA of 747. Uh, which is just not uh, not expected, I guess, um, from Feller. Meanwhile, Gaylord Perry, the Boston Splinters uh, starter, uh, improved to four and two. He allowed just one earned run in eight innings and um, seven hits during those eight innings as well. Um, and if we look at some of the offensive lines here, we can see uh, Tony Oliva, as I said before, he went three for five with three RBI. Uh, he had that single, a single in the first, a double in the first, and then a triple in the sixth. So just a homer short of the cycle for him. Uh, but, you know, people were batting, were hitting all up and down the, the lineup here. Uh, Ripken had, was three for five. Ted Williams was two for four uh, to bring his average back up to 400. Uh, Ricky Henderson, the only uh, Boston Splinter starter without a hit, but he did walk three times. So he was get, still getting on base. Um, but overall, uh, Oakland um, falls to 12 and 15 with the 12 to 2 loss here. Boston improves to 17 and 10 to open up a little bit of a lead, uh, a little bit bigger of a lead in the American League. Finally, we head to Los Angeles as the Houston Hoots uh, were taking on the LA Dynamos. Um, and this one, uh, both Tom Seaver and Pete Alexander, both starters, allowed four earned runs in seven innings. Um, Pete allowed 13 hits over those seven innings, whereas Tom Seaver just allowed eight. Um, but but overall, uh, kind of back and forth here. Uh, both teams scored in the first, the third, and the fourth. Uh, though in the fourth, uh, Joe Morgan hit a two-run homer to put L.A. on top four to three. Uh, Houston would score a run in the sixth, though, to tie it up, thanks to Willie Stargell's solo shot. And then in the eighth... Uh, going into the eighth here uh, with Jim Bunning on the mound for L.A., uh, relieving Alexander. Uh, Bunning ran into some trouble there um, early on, allow allowing a, a single, a double, another single, another double, um, and allowing three runs there to put Houston up 7-4 to four at that point. Uh, Houston refused to, uh, or excuse me, LA refused to, to just um, back down, though. They scored one run there in the bottom of the eighth uh, to cut the lead to seven to five. And then heading into the ninth, uh, Lee Smith came in to try to close things out for the Houston Hoots, but um, walked the first, uh, walked both Joe Morgan and Cristobal Torriente. And then Johnny Myers hit a two-run double to tie things up in the bottom of the ninth before Lee Smith was able to get out of that one. Uh, heading into extra innings, um, Tom Glavin held the Houston Hoots to just a, a single there in the 10th. 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, Hoyt Wilhelm came in for Houston and um, couldn't shut the door there. Uh, he walked Johnny Bench, uh, allowed a single to Barry Larkin. Frank, Frank Robinson did fly out to left, giving a little bit of hope that he could get out of the inning. But then uh, Joe Morgan came up, having already hit a two-run homer earlier in the game, and hit a uh, double to score the winning run against Hoyt Wilhelm. Uh, Joe Morgan, three for five in this one, three RBI and a walk uh, to be the offensive leader. Uh, Barry Larkin was four for five, though, uh, with four singles. Uh, other interesting thing of note is that um, there in the sixth inning, Ernie Lombardi hit a dribbler down the first base line, fielded by Bagwell. They both collided and both had to exit the game with uh, minor injuries. Uh, that allowed Bill Terry to come in and get his uh, first playing time of the season. Here we are at the more than halfway point of the season, and Bill Terry gets in there for the first time. Uh, Bagwell, the everyday starter, of course, and uh, Bill Terry immediately made an impact. He was two for two with uh, a double and two RBI there in his first couple of plate appearances here for Houston. Uh, Bagwell, to that point, was over for 4, so uh, though definitely the leader of the team um, hit 306 at this point at this point pop lloyd was four for six in this game with two runs scored in an rbi um again those four hits all singles here um but yeah overall the uh dynamos did outlast the Ho the hoots uh, to win this one eight to seven la improves to 15 and 13 and houston falls at 11 and 17 in this one so, if we take a look back here at the standings, we can see, as I mentioned before, Boston has now won three straight. Uh, Oakland has lost four straight. And uh, Boston now has a two-and-a-half game lead there over Detroit for the American League. Um, in the National League, St. Louis still the team to catch there. Uh, they have a five-game lead over L.A., who's 15-13. and 13. Uh, Still, uh, you know, if... Uh, still enough enough time left to catch to catch up here. Nobody's out of it for for sure yet. But as always, if you want to check out the action, head over to baseballmailstrom.com and you can check out the league here. You can view the stats and the the write-ups I do on each game and that kind of thing. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and enjoy following along. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about the league or any comments. Um, if you enjoy this content and you want to keep following the league, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the action. And uh, I think that's where I'll leave things. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, have a great evening.